Hey everybody, Midnight Ninja here, and this time I'm going to bring you a video on the inner workings of the firmware for the DJI Spark. Now with this, I decided to play around a little bit after having developed Android uh, ROMs and firmware for a while now, and since I knew it was based on Android KitKat, I wanted to explore more about the inner workings of the Spark. I figured maybe there was a way I could tweak some things, uh, find out a little bit more information maybe I didn't know, uh, maybe find out some specs that haven't been released yet, that kind of thing. So with that, we are going to dive in to the Spark, and I'm not going to do this through Terminal. I've already pulled as, much of the, as many of the internal firmware files as I can uh, without killing battery. Uh, my Spark is down to its last battery, and it's blinking on the last bar, so I am pro it's probably going to die on me. So before we get to that point, we are going to have a look-see and see what's going on. So I'm going to switch over to the desktop, and with that, we are going to look at what I've found. So I'm going to start off with a full-screen window of Terminal and show you that we are indeed in the Spark. So let me transition here real quick. Okay. So now we're in Terminal, and... You can see here that we are in the Spark. This is just the beginning. There are a number of things that we can get into, and there's a lot of easier ways to display some of this, but not everything could be pulled. So, for example, the sys folder, I can view it, but when I go to pull, so for example, this block, it'll sit here for an extremely long time attempting to pull in the file list, which so far I haven't seen, it doesn't seem that I've had enough battery to get it to actually get to the point where it can pull the files. Now even if it could, it would take quite a while. It's a pretty slow transfer speed. It's nothing like hooking up your Pixel or your Nexus 6P or your Galaxy Note and trying to pull files that way. It's nothing like that. It's extremely slow. So other than this part, I decide to leave that out and we are left with this stuff right here. Now a lot of this stuff contains a lot of goodies actually. <clears throat> I'm not going to go over every single piece, but I am going to go over some of the key points that I found that were interesting and I will dive into in another video some of the changes that I've decided to make after I go through and test them and make sure that they're viable. Of course, I don't want to crash this thing, I don't want to break it, brick it, whatever. So we're going to be cautious about some of this. So what we are going to do, while the Spark is still running, grab a new window, and I wanted to see the amount of RAM that the system has. So we're going to do uh, ADB shell, cat, whoops, cat, product, Dang it, I cannot spell proc mem info. And we are left here. Mem total 248, basically 248 megabytes of RAM. Now I come down here <coughs> and I see virtual memory allocated chunk is basically 500 megabytes. There's another 770 in total virtual memory allocated. Uh, but as far as actual onboard RAM, as far as I can tell, we have 248 megabytes of RAM. may not sound like much, but remember, this isn't running a full-fledged Android. This is a totally dumbed-down version that is really, it's not, but there's no UI, there's no graphics. It's not meant to run like that. It's a, basically a giant background process. So the next thing I wanted to look at was... Uh, the partition sizes and see how much storage there is on board. So for that, you can simply use a shell DF. Now with this, <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me, I really have something in my throat here. So ignoring the FTP blocks here, everything above are your sizes here. So black box is about two gigabytes. Data is 1 gig, system is 122 meg, 
vendor 59, and then you have little various smaller things from there on out. So if I add this up, I'm roughly three and a half gigabytes, more or less, uh, slightly less, but that's all right. So I'm going to say it's a four gigabyte chip, but with the amount that's here, if most of you know that in Android, your system partition is usually the biggest. Well, here it seems to be black box is the largest, usually because it holds files for black box. Data is where it sounds like a lot of stuff is going to be held. <clears throat> so if we look here on the used side, data contains 187 megabytes compared to systems 112. So there's a lot you can put in uh, data, but system is, well, pretty much full already. Black box is 1.9 and we've only used 1.4. Now, I don't know about deleting this. Um, I definitely don't think I'm going to try that and I doubt that would have any performance benefit. So let's move on out of this and go look into, since the battery is going to die, a couple of these other folders. So let's start with AMT, NFZ, and NFC database. Now, I have not obviously tried opening every single one of these files, but we're going to give it a shot. Let's open it in Notepad, and as expected, it's a bunch of stuff that is not really human readable. So we can scroll a fair way down here, and it's nothing that you can really get into. There are a couple uh, leading parts here, but the rest of it, you can't really work with it. <clears throat> so. Someone else may have figured this one out. I'm not going to dig into it too much right now, but I will do that at another time. So let's clobber that out. AMT, so the API test, vision, calibration, and let's, I don't know, let's pick one. Honestly, I couldn't tell you what absolutely any of that means, and I'm not going to try but it was interesting to see what was under calibration. At least I believe that was calibration. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> BT, I'm assuming is Bluetooth, so I would assume this is Bluetooth address. Hey, check that out. There's your Bluetooth address. It is editable, although I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but you could. All right. So that's pretty much now let's check out product here. That's not very helpful. That's in binary, so if we convert that down, we might be able to find something, but I'm not doing that right this second. View disk format. Uh, let's open that up just so more so you can see it. View disk format, okay, 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 blah, 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 don't care. All right, Wi-Fi config. This should be interesting. So here is your... Uh, It's kind of like the uh, SSID here, and below it is the password to get into it. So this is the SSID it shows, and this is the password used to log in. Yes, I know, I showed mine, but whatever. doesn't really matter. Now, the serial number is not one of these two, but this is for connecting the Spark. Now, I don't know if editing this makes a difference, so if you change this, change this password, something else, and then try logging in with that new password if that'll work. Again, that's something to try, but not tonight. And Wi-Fi MV RAM is just, it, it is crap, <laughs> really. Not human readable, so it doesn't help me any. All right, let's back on out to black box. <clears throat> and in here, We'll see we have 1.43 gigabytes worth of stuff. So camera, flight, UAV, and the control monitor network, blah, blah, blah. Let me look at this. And obviously, I'm not exactly sure how to open a DB file. So out of curiosity, or I'll say 0K. Are they, tr whoops. Are they truly 0K? Yes, yes, they are. How about flight? Everything there is zero. 
So it's kind of interesting. We need to find out where all of this 1.4 gigabytes is coming from. Could it be in any of these? No, well, part of it's here. So let's dig on in. Oh, look at that. We got a whole bunch of things in here. Yes, base distance check. Okay, so how about run IMU? Okay, so there's a lot of information that we can't directly read. We'd have to do a little bit of uh, inspection to figure all that out. But that's basically the black box. The cache, now this had something very interesting in it. So aside from recovery uh, statuses, you have this. And Android people will know exactly what this is. OTA, guess what, is an update package. Includes, includes recovery, normal images, context, essentially the uh, boot image, uh, what goes in system as far as files. And that's all in here. Now I'm going to eventually pull apart normal image and recovery image, and if I can, boot area image, and see exactly what the contents is. But basically this is a package used to update the Spark. This is what's sent over. So that's <clears throat> 64 meg. That's about the size of a full ROM back on the Droid 1. Heading on into data, we have well, some more stuff. And it does seem like some of these folders you've seen before, right? Well, some, yes. Uh, I think a lot of this is duplicated, uh, sort of like vendor in a way. but. Uh, I'm not going to get too far into this as we're going to get off track and I could really kind of get lost. So looking under dev, nothing, etc. Uh, let's see what do we have that's interesting. See, here's another recovery image. Again, it's not a UI because there's no graphical interface here. It simply runs as a service and does the update for that OTA package if need be. ISP firmware bin, install recovery SH. Well, let's take a look at that. So I'm applying patches, RAM disk recovery, recovery image already installed, blah, blah, blah. So not a whole lot different than regular Android. Here's a host file. Now, this probably isn't really going to help anybody as far as uh, putting in a modified host file for ad blocking like you would for a phone because this does not care about that. You could probably do it. There's room in the data partition. But I really wouldn't, I, I wouldn't worry about even messing with that at all. So out of curiosity, let's check in with this JSON package and see what this is. Okay. So there's, let me grab my mouse, I'm going off screen. There is a fair amount of stuff in here. And I'm not going to try to decode all this right now, but I am going to revisit this in another video. UGI battery power, all right, it's just about as big. What's this one look like? So there's black box, control, network, cache yeah, size, output port, max size. Okay, so this looks like something that can be fun to uh, get into here. And again, oh, battery on the spark just died. So there's no going back to that at the moment. Let's take a look at config XML. Configs are usually fun to play with. Okay, so what do we have here? Function config, main control, storage switch, check index, USB transfer, yes, SDK, load DSP, print OS, print sys. So there are a couple things it looks like we can change in here. Syslog, file size, file number. Um, <clears throat> if you don't want to have much in the way of logs, I'm probably going to find a way to disable logs uh, completely if possible. And hopefully that doesn't affect performance, but that's one less thing that the CPU has to do that then trans you know, uh, converts into less power that it has to consume, which should extend battery life. So, as you can tell, we should probably be able to get some fun stuff out of this. Okay, so 
not a whole lot more that's interesting in here right off the top of my off the top of my head. What if I scare the ACP? Let's check out firmware out of curiosity. Not a lot that I'm familiar with. Whoops. So recovery, okay, recovery images. Okay, so that's pretty much all that's here. Uh, at least that's of any uh, curiosity. So let's put back into firmware. Nothing there. FTP. And again, we're back to black box and what took up, I believe, 700 some odd. Yes, 737. So there's a little bit of duplication there, as you can tell. Uh, fly control, nothing. Upgrade. Uh, anything interesting in upgrade? Now here's the SIGs. But other than that, I never did open this. I was always curious. <laughs> So out of two lines, shouldn't that have been bigger? No. Properties, 19 bytes. Okay. Chrome can, OWL, log GPS. Nope, nothing in GPS, etc. We'll have to check that later. DJI, and see we're starting to get some more duplicates. Running into root, there's nothing. S bin. Again, not human readable but this is for ADB. Now you have a little bit down here, but this is not something you can directly edit, at least not in its current format. So we'll back out of that. DJI Verify, let's find out what that is. I was kind of afraid of that. Uh, healthy system check, let's see what system check is. Yep, I figured. Really wish some of this stuff was readable, It'd be kind of fun. Looking at SD card, I figure there's nothing. Sys, boot info, so there's boot mode, crash down power reason, and reboot reason. Uh, curiosity, let's find out what uh, what these are. So power up reason, power key, makes sense. Reboot reason, well, power key, alarm, recovery phone, critical factory, unknown crash down, blah, blah, blah. I don't know enough about this to figure out what's causing what, so I'll have to do some inspections on that later and boot mode so currently okay so these are selectable boot mode is currently normal and you would put active after it so you could boot into say recovery hardware reset watchdog rtc alarm blah blah, blah. Uh, usb cable usb factory obviously we're going to want normal because if we can't get back into this then how can we change it back and not have a problem Look at EXT4, block 14, MB stats. Oh, zero. How about I know read ahead blocks? 32. That might be something to change. See if that does any performance benefit. Your sys, how about firmware? Nothing. FS. Let's look under EXT4, and obviously we're back to the same thing. Power, PM freeze time. Now, one of these I tried, I think it might have been this one. I tried to pull, and it just froze when it was trying to pull it, which was weird. Freeze time out 20,000. I don't know what that means. Uh, let's check state. Freeze mem, okay. <laughs> wake unlock, wake up count. I would almost expect this to be fairly high, but apparently there's nothing in it. All right. <clears throat> so that's all for that. Let's go to system. Now, this is where I would normally spend quite a bit of time, but obviously you're going to see that it's missing the app and private app folders. This is not exactly the same as your standard cell phone installation of Android. So let's go ahead and take a look at build prop which most of you are probably familiar with. Right here, KTU, that's uh, KitKat's start. Obviously version 4.4.4, December 3rd, 2017, which would pretty much fall right in line for the last update, is a user debug, test keys, and all of your keys are obviously 
right here. Now, down under here, I could put some more edits, and I will figure out what edits I even want to put in. I have to think about this, because this is not like a phone. But as far as I can tell, I don't think I'm going to edit anything that's in here, because it really wouldn't do me any good. And lead core 1860. <laughs> that's cute. <coughs> it's probably the username of the guy that built this. Lead core, core developer 1860? I don't know. So let's move on to Ben Fuller. Yes, there is a lot to go through. A lot more than you would think. Now, I'm not going to go through that in this video. We'll do some more in-depth things another time. Um, I am going to be running out of time here tonight, and I do have to get to bed because I work in the morning. But we will revisit this. So CPU frequency scaling. It's frequently... Okay. CPU min frequency. <coughs> so we're looking at a 1.2 gigahertz processor, I believe. Actually, it might even be higher than that. I'd ha I'll have to go back and look up once I uh, boot the phone back up, or once I boot the Spark back up. So, out of curiosity, what else? ADB, let's quickly look at this. <coughs> okay, stop. Set prop service ADB, right? Yes. Easy report, add a one, okay. And there is BusyBox. Now that's something I might attempt to upgrade. I might look at putting in a new BusyBox and see if that works. It might not. We'll have to see. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Just really quickly running through here on some other things. There's recovery update. A uh, whole bunch of test things. Thermal. There's toolbox. Okay. So nothing that I'm finding is real awesome in here. Let's go to the etc. folder. Now again, this looks familiar. We've seen this. There's your host file. Been through both of those. Framework. Not a lot in framework. Lib. I generally don't mess with anything in lib. That's not part of my development cycle, so I'm going to leave that alone. Lost and found, I expect empty. User, share, zone info, TZ data. It's probably not readable. America, Kentucky, Monticello. Huh. Well, there's some weird combinations, but uh, what else we got? Anything? Whoa. Euro Pandora. Huh. Okay, so I'm not really sure what all that is. <laughs> That's interesting to figure out. System. Look at XBIN. Now here is BusyBox. Now BusyBox, I'm pretty sure I can upgrade this and it will still work. So I'm going to pull a version from my phone and I'm going to stick it in here and we're going to try some things and see what happens. But I'm definitely going to revisit that. So let's open a couple of these at a time. So KSM info, CPU stats. Uh, let's see, what else do we want? Procman, Procrank, both of those, and look at that, SU, hey. Uh, okay, so let's open these up, see what we got. So show lab, number of factors, okay. I might have to revisit this one as well. Show map, uh, not enough that I can work with, Procrank. Same thing, okay. Rockman. Not a whole lot here. I will have to see about decoding some of these files a little bit better. So there's KSM info. Again, same thing. CPU stats. 
not the status I was looking for, but then again, those files I was unable to pull. And I will do that once I recharge the battery on the Spark. That'll be another day, another time. And obviously, SU for crud. So we get back out of that. And there's obviously your build prop again. You see what's in here. Again, it only goes down so far. Pen. State files, report version ready, DJI. Okay, nothing interesting there. Car, clear, miscellaneous, snow. Whoops, went too far. Run. Nope, okay, nothing cool there. Vendor. Bin. Check 1860 state. Now remember that was uh, the display ID in build prompt. Secure if BGI secure debug, then SH non secure privilege. This is name check. Okay. Might edit that at some point. We'll see. Vendor cert. No. Vendor firmware. Ooh, that's some interesting stuff. Now check this out. Face model. What could be under face model? Face features, front model. Okay, so I'm assuming this, if the name is any indication, is how it detects your face. So that it knows when you go to do palm launch that you're looking at it. So it probably uses this to Left eye, two slits. Okay, yeah. So if I can figure out how to decode or pull apart the front model, then we can figure out exactly how it's uh, depicting your face. So obviously there's nose, left eye, left eye on split, front face alternate. Uh, I have curiosity. Let's do an XML and do MCS uh, nose. Okay, so this definitely needs some other pieces to be, well, not to be readable, but to make any sense. And obviously, there's a lot of calculations that are going into this. Can you tell? Lots and lots. Now, there's probably ways to clean this up, uh, but I don't think I'm going to do that. At least not, not quite yet. Now... Marker, marker, what's this? Oh, can't read that, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Scale makes no sense, and RIC obviously makes no sense. Okay, so we can back out of that. I'm gonna delete this because I didn't need that one. We'll close this. Marker trajectory. Primitive configurations. Is that? 2.5, okay, so how about we just take a trajectory configuration? Oh, you're going to complain about that. All right, open a notepad. Nope, so nothing that we understand. So we can delete this and close that. All right, so that's all we're going to do for that part. Obviously, lost and found is going to be nothing. So now we have another default prop. Should be another duplicate. Nope. This one has some other things. Now this would be interesting. RO secure, yes. Persist ADB back rut. Uh, I will probably turn this to one because I'm curious to know if that'll allow me to get into some other parts. Allow mock location, we don't care. Persist full primary, don't care. Debuggable, yes, obviously. And persists this USB config is under ADB. So, Changing RO secure to zero and changing back rut to one is probably something I'm going to work on. Which means all of my other edits for build prop are going to go in here. So if we check out in it, yeah, can't read that, right? All right. Now I could do environments. Well, actually, let's open. Yeah, let's open these guys. So. Most of you will probably recognize this stuff. I don't really mess with Trace RC. We can get rid of that. 
ended RC I messed a lot with. So let's skip over real quick to here. And this is the 1863 connectivity RC. Now, generally, I would go through services first and disable services that we obviously don't want. Now, things like bug report, but of course, why would that be in here? So, since it's not in here, we're not going to worry about that. But generally, I would not mess with this particular RC file. The environ, I wouldn't mess with this one really much either. Android boot logo is, yes, that's cute. Um, I did see a space for an actual logo, but I think that might be coded into something else. USB RC, I see gives you your codes for ADB serials, uh, things like that. Uh, there's no reason to mess with this. But if you're curious as to what's in here, we take a look around. So init RC is what we're really interested in at the moment. Come through here, our uBlocks GPS. Attack, okay. So on boot, here are some things that get set. Here are the start of some services. So here you obviously get the system, the monitoring system, vision, flight, uh, UAV, camera, network. And then we start moving on to start DJI system SH. Here are some properties. Uh, now I have looked through this before, but I didn't really find anything that I thought was worth trying to modify. At least not yet. But I will continue to look through here and see what I can change. Now here, service estimate. Uh, I, I may or may not enable that. I might. I I'd probably just leave it off, just because that's one more service that has that has to run. CPU uses power to do that, and it shortens your battery life. So we'll probably leave that disabled. Logs. Uh, if this isn't a useful log, I will probably go through and disable that. We will have to see. Let's move on down. Sensor, da, da, da. Okay, so down near the end, so far, nothing great there. At least nothing more. See policy, U event, da, da, da. Edit, default prop, okay. So that's basically it, guys. That is a lot. I am yawning way too much at the moment which means for me it is getting about time for bed. So I need to put my spark back on charge, put these batteries back up, and I will inspect some of this a little more uh, at work tomorrow. Not a whole lot to do at the moment, but once I figure out something interesting, I will start putting stuff over on the spark when I have a chance to go out and fly again. And I will give this stuff a shot and see if I can really get any performance benefits out of it, I'll have to do an initial test for battery life, uh, which will probably be as much as turn it on, let it hover, and wait till it turns off, and then put on the edits, let it hover, and see if I can make it last any longer. So, I mean, there's a few things I can do here. If you have some suggestions or something you'd like to have me take a look at, maybe you know how to get into a couple files, um, maybe there's some other information about the hardware that you'd like to know, and we can go ahead and look that up in Block Info. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do some of that stuff. I'll make another video on that. So I know this has been uh, a little over 34 minutes now in the video. That's been quite a while. I'm not going to keep you guys up any longer. In fact, I'm not going to be up much longer. I'm going to pass out of my desk. So with that... Hope you guys liked the video. Maybe you've learned something. Like, share, and subscribe, guys. And I will see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching.